you wish and it will be given to you. Praise the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 44, while Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon everyone who heard the word. Today, as you are listening to the word of God, may the Holy Spirit come and anoint each one of you. Let us ask our Heavenly Father for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Spirit move in your temple. Holy Spirit, Spirit move Holy Spirit. in our lives. Spirit move, we are calling. Spirit, Abba, Father. Pour out your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Pour out your spirit. We need your spirit. Pour out your spirit on us. Jesus, pour out your spirit on us. Lord for your love. Thank you Jesus for your presence. Thank you Jesus, Thank you, Jesus for teaching us. Thank you, Thank, you, Jesus. Thank you Jesus for giving us your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Lord for giving us the courage to bear witness for your gospel. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus for taking away all the fear and anxiety from our lives. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Holy Spirit. Oh come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts and kindle in us the fire of your love. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, today I would like to speak to you about fearing God rather than fearing your children. Many parents fear their children. Many parents do not fear God. So it is very important to hear the word of God right now. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. I was reading a homily of Pope Benedict XVI. He was preaching to couples in the Vatican. And he said to them, Don't be afraid of your children. Don't be afraid to read the Bible loudly in your homes. And he said, you are the primary teachers of the faith to your children. My sisters and brothers, many parents, they fear their children. One day, a family came to me for prayer. And the father of the family said to me, he fears that if he speaks the truth of the Bible, of the gospel, she may go away from home. He loves his daughter so much, so he does not want to say the truth. Anyway, he did not convey the truth, but his daughter anyway went away from the home. And I said to him, don't be afraid of your children. I just remem remembered the words of Pope Benedict XVI. So today I would like to speak to you about the sons of Eli. In the Old Testament, the book of Samuel, we see a great priest. His name is Eli. Eli had two children, Hophni 
and Phinehas. Eli was a man of God. He had got spiritual powers. The Lord has given him lots of supernatural gifts. That's why when Hannah came for prayer, he gave her a blessing. Eli prayed over her and Eli gave her a blessing, a priestly blessing. With that priestly blessing, after so many years of her trouble, she got a relief. She became pregnant and she gave birth to Samuel, a great prophet. It's because of the prayer of Eli. So he was very powerful. And again, the Bible says, Elkanah, the father of, of Samuel and Hannah, came to Eli for another prayer. This priest, Eli, again gave a powerful blessing to this family. Please listen. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. And the Lord took note of Hannah. She conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. And the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. You see, Eli was a man of God. He had got lots of supernatural gifts. The Lord heard his prayers. The Lord worked with him. But in his life, he had two sons. They were also priests. But these two sons were far away from the Lord. And Eli was not able to correct them. So we read 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 12 following. Now the sons of Eli were scoundrels. They had no regard for the Lord or for the duties of the priests to the people. When anyone offered sacrifice, the priest's servant would come while the meat was boiling with a three-pronged fork in his hand and he would thrust it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the fork brought up the priest would take for himself. This is what they did at Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. You see, the servants of these priests never respected the commandments of the Lord. And again, the Bible says, verse 17, please listen. Thus, the sin of the young men was very great in the sight of the Lord. For they treated the offerings of the Lord with contempt. You see, Phinehas and Hophni, they did not keep the first commandment. Eli, their father, was not able to correct them. When we continue to read chapter 2 and 3, we see that the sins of Eli's son increased. They committed adultery and they violated the first commandment also. In the history of Israel, the people of Israel, idolatry and adultery go together. Violating the first commandment and sixth commandment. This thing, this thing happened in their lives. And so they were gone far away from our Heavenly Father. So a prophet came to Eli. A prophet came and he gave a very strong warning. So my dear parents, when you listen to this word of God, if you have committed a sin like this, please ask, pray for mercy. Please listen. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 29. Why then look with greedy eye 
at my sacrifices and my offerings that I commanded and honor your sons more than me by fattening yourselves on the choicest parts of every offering of my people Israel. So this word is important. Why do you honor your children rather than me? As you are hearing this word of God, our Lord is asking this question to you. Do you honor your children than our Heavenly Father and His commandments? Are you afraid of your children or are you afraid of God? So, Heavenly Father sent an angel, a prophet, to Eli and asked this question. Why do you honor your children than me? So that was a sin committed by a great priest, Eli. As you are listening to the word of God, you also may be believing in God, you also may be trying to uh, fulfill the commandments of the Lord, but imparting the faith to your children and to correct them, that is very important and you might have forgotten to do that. The Lord is asking this question. Do you honor me or do you honor your children? And again, when the Lord rejected Hophni and Phinehas, the Lord was really anointing prophet Samuel. And one day Samuel got a vision from God. And Samuel was afraid to say about this to Eli. But Eli compelled him. So Samuel shared the vision with Eli. Listen, chapter 3, verses 13 following. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. You see, the Lord God was revealing to Samuel, boy Samuel, the sins of great priest Eli. Eli knew that Hophni and Phinehas was blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. So, the next verse. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. So my dear sisters and brothers, the first commandment is the most important commandment. That's why Jesus in his gospel, chapter 10, verse 28, Jesus said, Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. So my dear sisters and brothers, the Lord is reminding us that fear God. Fear God above everything. Only he can throw our body and soul into hell. And again, when Apostle Paul wrote a letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 4. St. Paul is encouraging the fathers and mothers to instruct the children properly. Please listen. And fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. And in the life of Eli, he failed in it. And what happened? We see in the first book of Samuel, chapter 4, both his sons were killed and the Ark of Covenant was captured. Hearing this news, Eli, 98 years old priest, he fell down and he also died. What a pathetic condition. Book of Sirach, chapter 16, verse 1 to 3. Do not desire 
a multitude of worthless children and do not rejoice in ungodly offspring if they multiply do not rejoice in them unless the fear of the lord is in them do not trust in their survival or rely on their numbers for one can be better than a thousand <coughs> and to die childless is better than to have ungodly children so the bible is speaking about ungodly children again book of proverb chapter 29 verse 17 discipline your children and they will give you rest they will give delight to your heart the bible teaches us discipline the children they will give you delight in your heart so let us pray now i'm going to pray that you may receive the spirit of courage so that you will be able to correct your children if they are away from the lord the lord jesus will give you the holy spirit so that you will be able to say them about the truth say them the truth and now let us ask god's mercy for the times we really failed in correcting our children like eli we might have honored our children than our heavenly father and his commandments lord jesus i pray for all the viewers of this episode lord i ask you to empower them with your holy spirit oh fill our hearts with the fear of the lord fill us with the fear of the lord holy spirit help us if there if there is anything that is hindering us from proclaiming the truth to our offspring let them be gone in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name jesus give us the courage to speak the truth to our children we ask this through christ our lord amen, amen. Praise, the lord. praise the lord praise the lord Jesus we are in front of you lord we remember the words of the psalmist those who looked at him 
became radiant jesus we look to you lord we offer all our sufferings all our happiness to you you know everything jesus you are seeing our heart and our minds yes lord jesus we pray for you are touch and healing both physical and emotional healing yes. my dear sisters and brothers offer all your worries to jesus because he said i will never forsake you i will never abandon you jesus he is here he wants to touch you if you are sick surrender your sickness to jesus and with faith you pray prayer of the faith is very powerful lord jesus i pray for your people jesus you are compassionate and loving god we believe in you jesus lord stretch out your hands and touch the people lord heal them lord deliver them lord if anybody is under the darkness lord give them your light jesus 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 be your lord and i will be here yes lord save me and i will be saved oh I will